Let's go to the word of God for the day. I've titled my sermon today, Truth Never Dies. Truth Never Dies. In the book of John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32, John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. Then Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. The truth will make you free. The virgin says it shall set you free. Spoke to those who believed. It was a verse for the believers. The reason I titled my sermon, Truth Never Dies. Many years ago, I read an anonymous poem that says, Truth Never Dies. Let me read it for you. It said, Truth Never Dies. Ages come and go. The mountains wear away. The stars retire. Destruction lays its mighty cities low. And empires, states and dynasties, dynasties expire. But caught and handed onward by the wise, truth never dies. Though unreceived and scoffed, scoffed at through the years, though made the bad ridicule and jest, though held aloft for mockery and jeers, insulted by the insolence of lies, truth never dies. It answers not, it does not take offense, but with a mighty silence, Bide its time. In some great cliff that braves the element, it ever stands uplifted by the wise and never dies. As rest the sphinx and Egyptian sands, as looms on high the snowy peak and crest, as firm and patient as Gibraltar stands, so truth. And wear it, waste the era blessed, when men shall turn to it with great surprise. Truth never dies. Nowadays they say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Somebody shout amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our country, our continent, the church is facing a difficult time. Hallelujah. It's facing a difficult time. I've shared this on Friday. That it is the time of the church in general to pray. Because so many things have been said. But all I'm saying to you today is that truth never dies. It is a moment where God will separate what is true and what is not true. Because truth is constant. Truth never changes. 
It's like our God who's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we talk of reality, reality must be measured by truth. It is a stabilizing force. It is the foundation of our Christianity. When you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and you begin to look at verse 14, the Bible is speaking about the belt of truth. We are being told to put the whole armor of God. But when we be it begins there, it begins to talk when it has already told us that we must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, that we must be able to stand firm. It begins to tell us that it's time we must fasten our belts. But it tells us that that belt is a belt of truth. Hallelujah. And this belt of truth, it was used to hold, hallelujah, the garments or the cheeks of the times. Even a warrior would begin to tuck in into the belt so that his hands can be free. The scabbard, the everything and weapons were hanging on this belt. And these are weapons that were offensive. It is very interesting that I saw something where people are analyzing belts. Hallelujah. Amen. They went into detail with the belt. I started saying, oh my God. Thank God I don't have the belt. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I will be in the list. <laughs> I'm fine with my cheap ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I saw the whole thing being prophetic by itself. Because the Bible says, let everything hand must hold on the belt of truth. Now, if it says there is a belt of truth, it means there are belt of lies. <laughs> I'm not condemning any, any bells, but all I'm saying, there is a belt of truth, it means there is a belt of lie. Yeah. But in other words, God is saying, you need a belt of truth so that you, you hold your things together. I went deeper because I meditate. Began to find out that it is very interesting the belt is also in the pelvic region. I said, Lord, are you saying that people must hold things together at the pelvic area too? Because the church is going, ah, I mean, hey, why? Because things are being now even lost at the level of their pelvic area. So let there be order. So that there is holiness and things attacked on the truth. The Bible says, Lord, sanctify them with your word, for your word is truth. You've got to be wise and sanctified with the truth. The question today that somebody can ask, can say, man of God, truly, when things are like this, 
what is truth? Because we are confronted with half-truths, confronted with deception, confronted with things that now are making the whole thing muddy. So what is truth? Truth is not information. Truth is not facts. You can have facts, but that are not truth. You can have an information that is not truth. Sometimes truth can be tough. But all I know is that the demonic world can never handle truth. Jesus hammered the devil in wilderness with the truth. And the enemy began to come and make some suggestions. But Jesus released the truth. And the devil was releasing some information and saying these are facts. But Jesus released the truth. And the enemy could not stand the truth. And ultimately the Bible says, and the devil left for a season. It's because he could not handle the truth. So your reality has to be measured by the truth. The Bible says you've got to gird your loins with the truth. It means if you begin to operate outside the truth, you are already operating in error. As much as the Bible tells us that we need the fivefold ministry to the point that we need prophetic detections in this day, But it does also tell us that there could be some that may em, em, come from or emanate from Satan. So the time for the church to be careful and you begin to know your word and know God and know who you are and when you know the truth, the truth brings light of God and it will be able to separate what is evil and what is not evil. Amen. The truth, it brings the order. If we look at it from the contemporary context and we look at the historical era of these tunics, it shows that it is to stabilize your life. Truth is to stabilize you. Somebody shout amen to that. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, you need stability. You need stability. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you hold the truth, I like the verse in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. When you're reading from verse 14 to 15, it says, then we will no longer be infants who are tossed by waves and carried around by every wind of teaching and by clever cunning of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up. If you don't speak truth in love, then the church of God will not grow up. But it is the truth of God that will make the church of God to grow up. So tell your neighbor, it's time to grow up. To grow up. Hallelujah. Amen. You must be an ardent student of truth. You've got to love truth. You've got to stand with the truth. 
Hallelujah. Praise be to God. If you stand with the truth, you stand in the principles of God, not in hearsay, not in what you believe or, or, or you heard, you heard, amen. You stand in the truth. In the truth. That is why I'm always careful not to comment about something that I don't know. Because if you comment about what you do not know, you are operating in a half truth. If you need to make a comment, research it thoroughly, go and find out, then come with the truth. But the truth of God, what is amazing, is that the truth of God will stand. And the truth of God is going to reject anything that is not truthful. The truth of God will expose anything that is not truthful. I kept telling you that even the magicians of Pharaoh, their rods did turn into snakes. There are things in this world that look like but what is genuine will stand forever. Because what is genuine has a solid ground. So what is the truth? Jesus said, I am. I am the truth. It means when you are looking for the truth, you must go to where the truth originates. And the origin of the truth is God. So when he stood, he said, I am the truth. So if you want truth, you will not find it outside Jesus. People have looked for it in liberalism, Marxism, communism, socialism, materialism, feminism, sexism, and all the isms of life. But they could not find the truth. Instead, they came out with some error. Because when they thought they have arrived to the truth, that was not the truth. Then they began to throw up their ism. The truth is Christ. Jesus said, I am the truth. So if your truth, which is your belt, where you are hanging everything, is not Stable, then it's not the truth. Because the truth is the objective standard by which reality is measured. When we are in Japan and you measure kilograms, it's still a kilograms even in Johannesburg. It's the same, it's the truth doesn't change. Whether you are in America, whether you are in the southern part of Africa or northern part or western, according to systematic international standards, a kilogram is a kilogram, my friend. A centimeter is a centimeter. There is a measure. And that measure I'm saying it's an objective standard because it's now upside you, but it still remains the truth. Amen. So Satan is a deceiver. Satan 
disorientates the church of God. He puts things upside down and yet they are right side up. Because he's trying to bring a confusion so that people begin to be diluted in their thoughts and their spirits to know what is truth. The enemy these days has been working relentlessly to distort truth. So that even an unbeliever can have an opinion about the truth of God. Hmm? Even an unbeliever now has an opinion. Even an atheist has an opinion. They even have an opinion about our God. They even have an opinion about the church. Even how the church must operate, they have an opinion. You are talking about issues of next door when we are not part of that family. But there is a danger when you who own the thing, you have nothing to say. Because everybody's going to have something to say. And sometimes the voice of the enemy becomes stronger. The truth as well is that if you stand in the truth of God, you cannot defend God. Stand just in the truth. Let the church be truthful. If the church is truthful, God is going to defend himself. But the problem is when the church will move from the truth. Then when they move away from the truth, then they've opened themselves to deception. And the devil will have an opinion. We cannot preach a partial message. In other words, even as a church, we cannot purport this new ideology of salvation without repentance. This, this salvation without repentance kind of a shift in the gospel today has become a tragedy and a mockery into the work of the cross. That is exactly how the church has shifted to the state it is facing today. People are no more convicted of sin. People have no fear of God. Because if, you're, if the church is convicted in sin, church will never operate in sin. But the salvation that is being preached today is a partial, diluted, half-baked message that is excluding repentance. People are saved without repenting. What do you call that thing? So, if you do that, that means it's salvation without the Holy Spirit. We've got to look at David in the Bible. He was a paragon of virtue when it comes to leadership. And he became a prototype of the Jewish Messiah. The reason is because David moved in repentance. It does not show that David was a perfect man. 
But David knew how to repent. In my own analysis, the church is pushing salvation without repentance. People are no more re truly repenting and crying out to God. Therefore, the, the kind of Christians that are coming out are half-baked Christians. They will do something without fear. The truth of God will fight any limiting beliefs of darkness. It will fight inconsistent thoughts of mind. It will fight feelings and emotions that are not of God. It will fight the subjective and irrelevant. It will not just be based on a personal preference. It will be based on the truth, which becomes the measure of who God is. So the truth is the aspect of being. It's the aspect of your existence. It is the aspect that will bring your identity so that it takes the church out of this identity crisis. It brings reality. It brings the presence of God. But it is the truth. And that truth cannot be found outside the word. Let's be like Jesus. Where you bombard the enemy with truth. The question is, what is your final standard? Because I said the truth is an objective standard by which reality is measured. So what is your standard of measuring what is true? Because if it's your feelings, your feelings will deceive you. Because feelings change. So feelings cannot be a measure of the truth. I'm not saying you mustn't feel anything. But it is not the measure of truth. They can deceive you. So feelings are not the final arbitrator of the truth. They are not going to be the determiner of truth. Not even your brilliance, because your brilliance is final, is finite. It stops somewhere. In other words, when you get new information, new data, or new data, you can change your truth. So you cannot even use that. So if you walk with the enemy, the enemy piggyback on lies. That is why the Bible says, God, I mean, Jesus began to tell them that, to them that you are like your father of lies, the devil. There are people that use the name of God in vain. But the truth is that their father is the devil. And the devil is a father of lies. You know when you lie, you can lie until you believe you lie. You, you, you remember the brothers of Joseph? Huh? They made a lie about killing him. 
Hallelujah. They made a lie about killing him. They said, no, he died. And one day, they stood in front of him in Egypt. Boom, in front of the brother. Because they, 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 they believed the lie for so long. He asked them a question. How many are you in your family? They are not saying it's their brother asking them. They said it, how many they are. He said, then what happened to this? I said, oh, this one died. Can you see how much they have traveled with a lie? That they, they've, they've been living with a lie until they believed their own lie. That their lie has become their truth. So if, if, if you continue in a lie and live a lie, you will end up believing your lie. And you will end up standing for your lie and say, this lie is truth. But the lie is a lie. So be careful about how much you stand on a lie. Because the more you live a lie, your life will be a lie and everything in you will be lying. And you can build an organization, even build a ministry on a lie. Why? Because you have, you have been lying for so long that your lie has become your truth. Even when I'm saying you are lying, you're going to say, I'm not lying. 